Hello, I'm Natalie Kunzman, MD, and today we are talking about shingles, which is yet another viral story. And this was per request by one of our viewers who wanted to learn more about it. So this is a virus um, that has its initial infection in us in the way of chickenpox. And I'd like to remind people that this virus actually is an upper respiratory spread and not everyone has the skin manifestations. Some people just have cold symptoms. So therefore, not everyone remembers having chicken pox as a child. Plus, we are immunizing our kids now, so they still might get exposed and have some minor symptoms, but they also may not have those skin vesicles. This virus has a predilection for hiding out and laying dormant in the dorsal root ganglia. Until recent, it has been unknown that varicella zoster virus, so we are talking about varicella or zoster virus, lives dormant in the nerves of the intestinal system and the enteric nervous system, and this is in the gut. This is a DNA virus, which is in the herpes family, or herpes viridae, and herpes actually means to creep. There is something about the structure and its secretion of the DNA proteins that gives it what we call neurotropism. So it gives it its ability to penetrate and get into neural tissue. And once inside that tissue, that DNA embeds itself in our host DNA and will continue to live there. This is why we see the pattern of presentation in patients when we do. So the first presentation of the varicella zoster virus is classically a case of a few days of some upper respiratory symptoms and, and maybe even those fluid filled small blisters of the skin that itch like crazy. Now, in the worst case scenario, especially in infants, could be a varicella pneumonia or fetal demise if infected in utero. This used to be a very common infection of childhood, but now it is slowed down secondary to vaccination. Now there is a treatment if you should become infected, which is acyclovir, and that works mostly because this virus hasn't mutated too much, so this medication has been effective throughout the years, making the host or the person having fewer days of the infection. So now years will go by, and in adulthood, if the right conditions of a faulty or a poor immune system occur, the virus may reactivate and rear itself up at the dorsal root ganglion, which is what causes that painful rash in a distribution that we call a dermatome. So a dermatome will follow that nerve as it exit out, exits out that nervous, that dorsal root ganglia. And the ganglia is an area where nerves will congregate in their cable cord and form um, a, a ball or an area as the nerve root exits off there. But the budding evidence is showing that varicella zoster is one trigger being considered for other disorders that we never thought of in its secondary infection, such as neurologic consequences in autism, Parkinson's, ALS, and a few others. And varicella zoster has also been implicated, again, as the secondary infection, in GI disorders such as some of the gastric ulcers and peptic ulcers, and some of uh, the abdominal pain that may be related to an IBS picture or even gastroparesis. So why can this virus reactivate in the first place? Well, we need intact T cells to be able to patrol the area and keep these viruses from activating. So if we create conditions where those T cells aren't working or they're as distracted, the, that virus will win that battle. Now there's hope 
because we do have treatment to get the virus to go dormant again. And there are a few antiviral medicines on the market, which you all may know, such as Valtrex and acyclovir. Now, it, with the secondary infection, it causes a real, what I call a burning to the nerves. It burns or temporarily damages those nerves or neuropathy. And we actually have some medications that can help that sensation while that healing is undergoing. As a quick reminder, we've got two sectors of immunity. Uh, one of them is, is your basic innate immunity. And that is something that is inherent to most people, regardless of exposures. And that we'll talk about chemical factors and cytokines and chemical mediators. And it may also activate what we call the complement cascade to help identify bacteria and activate cells and remove foreigners from our bloodstream. But then we also have what is called the adaptive immune system, which is what we are talking about with these T cells that need to create a, a memory of this illness and create antibodies. And this is also the principle that helps us create an immunization to help us with our adaptive immune system. So again, we have two sectors of the immune system, but what can impair this immune system to allow shingles to reactivate? Well, some people may be on immunosuppressants if they've received organ transplants. They may be on steroids or chemo drugs, and that will absolutely suppress those white cells in our bloodstream. If you've just had an operation, that may suppress your immune system. There are some medical conditions such as Hodgkin, Hodgkin's disease or HIV or lymphoma or leukemias or even some of the chronic disorders such as diabetes. Now, a distracted immune system might be one that's trying to fight another infection and simply we just do not have enough soldiers to fight a battle and to keep border patrol. Being a newborn with a completely immune, or excuse me, immature immune system makes you at higher risk. Alcohol will suppress the immune system. Environmental toxins, stress, depression, poor sleep, depleted micronutrients. So all that being said, what could we do to improve our viral immunity? to improve or prevent a shingles outbreak. Well, we need good sleep, exercise in moderation, stopping smoking and excessive drinking, low stress, avoiding the virus itself, and we know some of these principles. Some of those micronutrients that are essential to keep our immune system operating flawlessly are vitamin D, zinc, beta carotene, especially in the good food sources. And I can't say enough about vitamin C. There are foods that are particularly good for the immune system, such as bone broth, which has the marrow, veggies and fruits. And then we have some key herbals, such as astragalus, echinacea, elderberry, green tea, ginger, myrrh, and oregano. So there you have it, folks. Any medication or immunization we use must have an intact immune system for it to even take hold. And shingles is no exception. So keep that immune system healthy. If you have any questions, please leave a message down below. Subscribe to my channel. Share to all who need to hear this information and hopefully you will remain shingles free. And until we meet again, be well.